Evidence that perhaps you're not. And we would keep track of it over time. Months. <laughs> what was interesting is that we were testing this hypothesis, so then when we started doing it, his mom, I talked to his mom and his dad, and his brother was really involved in his life, and they would test this theory of our angelness. And they would keep track of it, and what was happening was there was this accumulation of evidence that he wasn't, and there was no accumulation that he was. Well, the, the, he had the weather thing, so he kept that one going. He also had the other one that was really kind of interesting, is he had satellite TV, and he liked, he, was, he had Jeopardy on a loop, but he couldn't remember, so he, seemed, he watched the same, like, you know, they'd put it up on a satellite, and they would replay every half hour show over and over again. So by the end of the day, he saw it like 53 times, and didn't know it, but he would answer the questions. Like, I remember one time I was there at night, and he's like, and it, there's Jeopardy now, so he's answering these questions, and he goes, I think it's a theory that I'm an archangel. I know the answers before. I'm like, okay, a little bit of data that perhaps you are an archangel. Three months, four months, I stopped working with him as much. One day he calls me at the crib of the sky and says, Tim, I want to talk to you. I think my theory of me being an archangel is wrong. I don't think I'm an archangel. I think I'm a male model. So it's <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but I mean, that's a complex situation there, a whole bunch of stuff. But you start, okay, what is important to you? And what happened? He's an archangel. And what our first thought is we need to accept none of them. You're not. Maybe you are. I was relatively confident that my theory was correct. <laughs> but I think it's a mistake when we think, come on, the world around you knows you're not a freaking artist. But we can go through it. We can go through it with any range of things. But it's the framework. It is a conversation. It is a way of thinking that guides the day-to-day -day practice. That is, by the way, a positive behavior support. Positive behavior support is not putting things in the good bucket, and positive behavior support is not, you know, positive behavior support, like many things, has become a religion. And when things become a religion, bad things happen. Sort of a protocol, and the orthodoxy, you go to this, it's big in schools, and I know it's starting in Australia, it's happened in the States, and what's happening is, it's been in, in the States for about 10 years, and people started to realize this is just another, it was the originators of it were really it was it was designed to be a flexible support, but what happens is it gets to be protocol. And once it becomes protocol, it's like ABA, anybody work with autism? It's you know discrete trial training, you gotta do discrete trial training, you gotta do I was trained by those guys. It's like everything. Everything works at 25% of the population. Everything. Pick it. It'll work with a percentage of the population. But the idea you generalize it to a whole population, that's what this is designed not to do. You don't fall in love with anything. You only fall in love with things that work. And, it, and things, by the way, things work over a period of time, and things that do work stop working. But you don't fall in love. You say, okay, we got benefit out of this because we're human beings, and we change, and we grow, and the circumstances we grow, and the context in which we live change. So that's a good thing. So again, it's a, it is. That's it. So you can all leave now. <laughs> Anybody else? Any questions? Comments? Yep. So, Diane, she has a specific person she wants to ask about. You should give her that thing so that you know, we'll be able to repeat this. Why don't you move up over there? Give <laughs> 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 me one freaking job. <laughs> By the way, you know I'm kidding, right? I mean, I thought about that. Well, I have a dude in the background. Oh, who gives a shit about you? I'm at the restaurant. You know what? You know what? God damn it. Whatever. No, confidence is not a problem for everyone. Um, no, I'm kidding, right? Well, go ahead. Yeah, we're not kidding a Are you sure it's paranoia? Well, we're, we're, we're kind of thinking there's evidence. You have a theory. We have a theory. You have a theory. So you're, you're talking about, okay, already you fucked up. <laughs> Okay, so let's start. Okay, what's the problem? Well, the problem is that 
to do it here, but can't do it there. What would I most likely think of that? It's not a can't, it's a don't. Can't is under what and under no circumstances can this person do this. So if somebody has a memory impairment, it doesn't matter where it's now. How's this? If somebody has a memory impairment, I notice that when they're with their daughter, their memory improves, I'd say, hmm. It may be don't because it, there is a clear indication of competency here, but there are contextual variables that maybe so this person can't do things. That would be more don't than can't. Do you see it? So, I have a theory of can't, let's test it. And can't is skill sets. Can't is knowledge base. Can't is they got it or they don't. So if there's variation across different environments, that would move me, now, I could be wrong, but that would move me towards more don't than can't. On the other hand, if I know somebody when they're with their kid all the time and they're having a good time, they can do it, but when a staff person comes in and they go, fuck, I can't do it, I might think of that more as a woman. So I have to think of all the contextual variables as I'm generating. So I'm going to choose this theory, and I'm going to figure out who, where, what. That's why I'm saying like more successful than others with certain people versus other people. So lots of observations. Yes, actually, I would say it's not lot. Yes, but I would say it's less lots of observation, but more lots of conversation. Now I know that that seems subtle, but it's critical. If people are listening and they're, and they're getting the impression that you are, and again, we were having a conversation with when everyone to lunch is, we have this conversation with people as we're trying to help them learn how to do this kind of stuff, and we have lots of conversations that you need to reveal something about yourself as well. Now, if you work in the world of therapy, well, that's kind of transference and you have to keep emotional distance. Screw that. Somebody is inviting you into their life. Now, I am not saying you say, by the way, last night my wife and I had a huge fight. She's such a bitch. <laughs> Probably not good. <laughs> but yeah, I understand. So you, know, you want to demonstrate empathy? Now, the idea is, how do you demonstrate empathy? Is I understand. Now, the mistake some people make is they overshoot it. So, you know, so somebody says they have a brain injury, did this stuff, and you say, I know what that feels like. No, you don't. It's like, well, uh, when we were first married, our house... We, kind of, we lived in a little house that was on a floodplain, and it had a 500-year flood. Our house was inundated, gone. Everything was gone. And I went to work, and my boss said, I know, boy, I had two inches in my basement. <laughs> and I'm like, her name was, her nickname was Ozzy. I said, Ozzy, I'm going to leave now, because if I don't, I will kill you. Because you have no clue. I lost everything. You were you moved your shit. My shit is like in the Atlantic Ocean now. <laughs> and so the idea is you reveal something about yourself, but you don't try to say I'm in the boat with you because you're not. So it's not observation. And the reason that I get sort of sensitive about observation, that means that we're sort of keeping ourselves out of it. If you look at this, what is, it, what is one of the realities here? Is I'm in it with you. I'm in your life. We're figuring this out. You're not coming to me. I'm figuring out how I'm going to get you. Now, I understand we have people that can't go, and that, so we do stuff. We Skype with people, I talk to people on the phone, but there are times the idea is how you're demonstrating I'm in it with you, and that what matters is what you're experiencing, not what I think you should experience. So it's not, it is, it's more like interactive in conversations. <coughs> yep. Anybody else? Yep. Oh, it's fun. It's fun. How's this? We had a, like a cool, I work with a four-year-old. And what's the value outcome of one four-year-old? They want to be a whale. <laughs> cool. They want to be a whale. I remember talking to them saying, you want to be a whale. You want to swim in the water. No, I want to be a whale. <laughs> really, you know, the next day is different. But even then, when, you, when a kid says, I want to be a whale, and you go, oh, it's a great whale. That's important. But got it. You know, talking about like this kid on the autism spectrum and his mother looked at me like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> you can't encourage that. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Of course, it was three weeks later and he was like, you know, Tim said I'm going to be a whale. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to do a whole theory. Oops, I'm sorry, you did the theory. Oops. Which was, well, if you're going to be a whale, what do you need to have? Do you need to have a low hole? Do you have one? No. And then, you know, he's one of those kids who was, was there's five with autism who said, you know, well, I could have reconstructive surgery because, you know, at five, you've got the intellectual capacity. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> but you're going to have to deep dive to get what you need. And it's like, they sort of came and changed it. And then it was going to be, I can't remember what it was, but it's funny. But the great thing about young kids is their, their valued outcomes often change over time. And that's actually good. It's a good thing. But what you do is we respect it. It's OK. Right? And kids are, kids are far more fun. Adults are jerks. Kids are fun. <laughs> Teenagers, especially. Once they get off the iPhone, they miss the toy. <laughs> so again, within that framework, then, it's like theory. The diagram below best illustrates giraffes are heartless creatures. Because if you can see, they're all together. He can't reach it, and he dies in the corner. <laughs> But you know what? He thought outside. It was Lamarck, it was Darwin, it was Malthus, it was Lyle. No, Lyle. no, it was giraffes are. I like his theory better. <laughs> you know, what happens is, it's a crazy theory, it's meant to be a smart ass thing, but a lot of folks who work with it, I mean, come on. That's freaking funny. <laughs> That's somebody who's, you know, he's writing that with a gleam in his eye. And what happens is we live in a world, oh, no, no, that's serious. You know, he got, you know, he got, he got minus points for that. I would have given him full credit. And I think what happens is we, because we have an expectation of stuff, we lose this idea. What I, you know, when I'm talking about we're trying a bunch of theories and we want to be as creative as possible, that's only a good thing. Outlandish is good because outlandish is also how do we have fun? Because you know what happens is when you start doing this stuff, people have a sense of humor activity. <laughs> So doing serious business, you know, people doing strange things, and we say, oh my God, this is crazy, and we can't do this stuff, and there's so many things, and you know, he's going to go to jail, and he's going to do this stuff, and he's going to do this stuff, and we get, you know, we get into the sort of this ongoing tragedy of what's happening, which is we work with interesting people doing really funny things. And how are you having fun? If you are not having fun with the people you're working with, something's wrong. Something's wrong. And all, by the way, if you look at the root of the word fun, and the word therapeutic, they're similar. Therapy is overcoming. Fun is overcoming through you. So if you go all the way back to the Latin, they come from the same root. So what happens is we beat the fun out of everything that we do because we say we've got to do these things because I'm afraid that the, the insurance companies are going to do stuff. You know, the reality is, what is the big deal? I, I say it all the time. I mean it. When I say this to you guys, what's the worst that can happen? If the worst that can happen is somebody can get hurt, then we're not doing that. But if the worst that can happen is we get embarrassed, the worst that can happen is that some money was spent. <coughs> if the worst that can happen, so we had this little school, and one, one day one of the kids, we had a bunch of kids, we had, we had well, well, was only 19 kids in the school, they were all kids with very serious behavior problems, they'd all been incarcerated one point or another, and they were coming to our school, and one of the kids was in our school because he burned his other school down. A little problem with your management, I suppose. But anyway, um, one day he was out with a couple of his, with another kid in the school at night, and they, uh, one, the one kid knew if he went home, his father would probably beat him. The other kid knew that he was in a group home setting that they would lock the door, they would let him in. So they came down to our school and broke in. So in the morning, I get there, and James, the kid's name, head pops up, and then John's head pops up. I'm like, it's like 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, hey, dudes. And everybody had a stroke. You got to call the police, all this other stuff. I said, no, 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 no. I have a theory. Do you know what my theory was? These guys have found a place that's safe. So instead of being upset, all they did was eat too much ham and cheese. And that was it. And they didn't do the dishes. It was all the staff were like, we're going to call it, we can't do this stuff. And I'm like, no, my theory is this is a good indicator, not a bad one. And so we're so used to thinking about, but they broke in and did this stuff. They, they were saying, I'm safe here. I don't have to worry about getting hurt. I know that I'm going to be warm because it's in Vermont. So it's like, you know, four to five. By the way, at home, we had nine inches of snow yesterday. You know what snow is, right? <laughs> As my wife said, I was like, oh, it's nice here. She said, yeah, screw you. <laughs> I hope you're having fun looking at the Olympic Park, asshole. <laughs> I'll give kisses, dear. 
Um, I had a theory there, which was, was a mistake on my part to talk about how great it is. But again, what's the idea is that how are we having fun and it's chaos. Embrace the chaos. You, what is it, there's an old Taoist saying, the more you try to control something, the more it controls you. And if you, if you really look at the old Taoist saying, the more you try to control something, the more it controls you. And the next statement they have following that is, and usually for the worse. I can't make you. Why do we talk about theory? Why do we talk about what's your idea? Why do we talk about what is your valued outcome? Because if I don't start from there, we're doomed. We'll repeat patterns. And you know what we'll do? We'll do what everybody does with computer problems. We'll say, that intervention didn't work. Let's try the new intervention. And what we missed was, what are we doing with people to help them in a way that's important and meaningful in their own lives? So how are we having fun? I like this one. Old people at weddings always poke me and say, you're next. So I started doing the same thing at funerals. <laughs>